Welcome to the channel. Before we start, I would like to ask you a favor. If you like the video, please consider subscribing and leaving a thumbs up. And if you don't like it, thumbs it down and let me know why on the comment section below. And now, let's get on with the video. Formica arenaria, firstly described in 1787 by Fabricius, nowadays known as Messer arenarius or the dune harvester ant. From the Latin Messer, meaning harvester, and arenarius that translates as sand. It's the second largest Messer species in the world, after Messer cephalotis. The queens measure 20 mm, while the workers' sizes vary from 5 to 18 mm. These ants have a spectacular black matte coloration, with orange-red hues for the recently eclosed majors, and purple wine hues for the older majors. It is a species of ant belonging to the Myrmicinae subfamily and the Messer genus. It is comprised of four subspecies, Alfieri, Diabolus, Rotus, and the Bicus. These ants in particular are commonly encountered in more arid habitats like semi-deserts and deserts. They can be found distributed across the northern part of Africa and into the Middle East to countries such as Morocco, Algeria, Libya, Egypt, Sudan, Syria, Israel, Iran, Iraq, and Saudi Arabia. Most Messer are polymorphic, and Messer aeronarius is no exception, and where polymorphism exists, a division of labor is normally also associated with it, either being foraging for food, defending the nest, storage food, caring for brood, and in the Messer case, chewing seeds. Messer is a genus of primarily granivorous ants that play an important role, especially in desert ecosystems. Harvester ants build large underground nests where seeds and other plant materials are stored inside the nest chambers. Although the seeds are stored for later consumption, many end up germinating and this increases the desert vegetation cover, which also increases humidity retention on the soil. And so, where there is water, there is life. In their natural habitat, these ants undergo a rainy season from December to March a seed ripening season from April to June, and a dry season from July to November. During the different seasons, they employ and adapt their foraging behavior accordingly, and have been known to use two types of for foraging strategies. A gregarious type, known as foraging columns, directed towards food resources of high density, such as food patches, and a solitary one, directed to resources with a more scattered distribution Messer arenarius uses both mentioned foraging strategies and has been acknowledged to gather virtually all plant species within its foraging range, because relatively to other Messer species, their colonies don't grow as large, having an estimated number of workers between 800 and 1,500 individuals. This estimation was based on external foraging workers and internal workers' correlations and an actual nest survey. Their nest architecture was surveyed and described in 1971 as a numerous of interconnected chambers. Reading directly from the paper, the nest I had uncovered extended over 10 square meters and reached 2 meters deep. On the first 50 to 70 centimeters below the surface, the sand is dry and very loose, but after that, the existing humidity gives it a bit of cohesion. The first few galleries, with only some workers inside, are narrow and fragile. The slope of the tunnels is always very smooth and long. Nearing 2 meter depth mark, the first granaries and brood chambers emerge. The granaries filled with seeds and the brood chambers filled with larvae. It also unveiled some very small workers, only 5 or 6 millimeters in length, which are never seen on the surface. The nests of Messer arenarios are deep and very humid in the inner chambers and tunnels. Regarding the nest excavation, coming from the depths underground, each worker appears on the surface carrying between its mandibles a dumpling of agglomerated sand. These sand balls are made with the usage of their specialized beards and their forelegs. After a few days, the accumulation of sand balls forms a mound around the opening of the nest. Often this rubble takes the form of a volcanic crater, the highest wall of which is on the side of the prevailing wind. So for those of you who don't know, I had two Messerinarius colonies, uh, one larger and one smaller. And I decided to sell the larger one, I kept the smaller one. And, um, and I decided to make this video as an introduction for 
uh, the colony itself and to be able to do further updates. So I hope you enjoyed this video, it was a little bit different. Uh, if you did, don't forget to subscribe and like or comment something. And uh, thank you so much for watching and see you on the next week. Thank you.